The corner tool is an easy way to change the styles of your shapes in Affinity Designer. It's much easier to use than the pen tool for creating rounded edges, and it's non-destructive. Today we'll look at how to use this tool with shapes, images, and text. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're going to be talking about the corner tool. Not to be confused with the contour tool, which I covered in a previous video. But first, I want to thank everyone who watches my videos and likes them and subscribes and adds comments. And even if you just watch it, thank you. I recently passed 500 subscribers and that was a great milestone for me. When I started working on this channel in the summer in early June, I had exactly one subscriber. So thank you to that person. I hope to keep providing you tutorials, not only on Affinity products, but other products going forward. So stay tuned. So let's look at the corner tool here. I have a rectangle and this is a rectangle that I made from the shape menu over here. And there's a couple ways we can use the corner tool in Affinity Designer. Some shapes such as the rectangle here will automatically have a corner option you can select up top here. And if I click this drop down, you'll see that we have, well, we have four different corners. One is none, but you have rounded, straight, concave, and cutout. So let's take a look at some of these. If I select rounded, you can see that obviously the corner is more rounded here, and I can adjust it with this radius here. And this is gonna be common for all of the different types of corners. If I go to straight, we have this straight line here. I'll adjust this. This is the straight corner effect. I'll select concave. This kind of gives like an indented look. Can adjust that too. And then we have cutout. You can see this could be used to make a cross or something like that. So the other way to use the corner tool is kind of the more general way, which is you select your shape and then you click this button here, the corner tool. So it's the hotkey C. So I'll click on that. And what happens is when you select a vertice in your shape, you get this option here. Now, I'll give you a little bit of a warning. Sometimes there seems to be a bug where this is grayed out. You may have to click your vertice a couple times to get it to show. Um, it seems to happen more with the shapes than with the freeform curves, but it's something I've noticed. And I, I reported it on the Affinity forums, so perhaps they'll fix that. But long story short, when you select your vertice here, you can choose the type of curve you want. And this one actually gives you a little more of a visual representation of what's happening. You can see as I make the curve, it's based on this radius of the circle. And by the way, this is non-destructive, so we can totally undo this. If you do a bunch of curves and you don't like what you did, let's say you made something like this, let's say you wanna just reset everything, you can reselect all the points and just click the none option here to undo it all. And by the way, if you wanna change everything at once, you can again select all the nodes in your shape. And if I select something like, let's do concave, that one's fun. You can change them all at the same time. This also works across different shapes. So if I select both my shapes, if I select the corner tool, I can select vertices across all my shapes and I can edit them simultaneously. And I can also undo it simultaneously. Now I'll just show you a couple other shapes that it works with. It works with pretty much all of them, but with the triangle, you can also do it. So I'll select the corner tool. I'll select all my nodes and let's do the straight line one. So you can kind of get cool shapes like this. And by the way, just in case you're wondering, you don't actually need a stroke. I'm just putting it there to make it cleaner, but you can have no stroke if you want and it'll still work perfectly fine. You could even have a dashed stroke if you wanted. So that could be something you want to do. You can even have the corner tool work with a star shape. So I'll select all the points in my star. I have the corner tool selected and I'll make it round here. So I tested it with the other shapes too. I won't go through all of them, but it basically works anywhere there's a point. You can also use it with the pen tool and with points you make from that. So let me make a shape with that. I'll just draw something random. So you can use the corner tool to change points on a arbitrary curve you made. So you can drag this in like that. And by the way, in case it wasn't clear, you can use different corners for different parts of your shape. So I use the round part here. Over here, I'll use perhaps the straight line part like that. Maybe down here, I'll use the indented angle there. So you can use different styles for any part of your image. And this is kind of a random shape, but you can use it for any arbitrary curve you make. So now let's talk about how to use the corner tool with images. Now, by default, the corner tool doesn't actually work with images. So I have an image selected here. If I select the corner tool, there's no option here. It doesn't really do anything, but there's an easy way around that. And we're gonna use a clipping layer for that. Now, if you're unfamiliar with clipping layers, I made a video recently on that. I'll link it in my description. It's pretty short. I recommend checking it out. It's a great feature of Affinity Designer. And we're gonna use it in a simple way in this video. So what I did is I just locked my image so it doesn't move around. And now you wanna select the rectangle tool. And with snapping enabled, just drag a rectangle that perfectly covers your image. 
You can have a fill, you, you don't need a fill. I'm just putting it here for demonstration purposes. And now take your image, unlock it. And what you wanna do is drag your image right over the name of your rectangle. I'm gonna let go. If I expand my rectangle, you can see that my image is now inside of it. I'll leave the border on my rectangle just for demonstration purposes, but it's not needed. And now really all you have to do is just use the corner tool with your rectangle here. So I'll select the corner tool and I'll start dragging in the edges. Maybe I want to use the other one. Um, let's see, concave. So I can make the edges concave here. And that's really all there is to it. Like I said, the curve, you can have the border on it or not on it. It's up to you. You can do other cool stuff. You can add an outer shadow to your uh, image here. But that's kind of beyond the scope of this video. But that's how you support the corner tool with an image. Just put it inside of your frame and then start adding the corners as you want. And like I said before, this is completely editable as you go forward. So maybe you want to do different style corners. You can change it. Maybe you want these other squarish corners. It's really up to you. And by the way, I said it's non-destructive, which it is. If you want any of the corner tool effects to be permanent, you would click this button called Bake Appearance. And that basically just converts your structure to curves. So if I select all of this, if I select Bake Appearance, now this is permanently how it will look. And I can't actually use the corner tool anymore. So you know, maybe that's something you want. There are situations where you need to bake the appearance, but I would recommend in general, if you can get away with not baking the appearance, just leave it unbaked, if you will, because that'll give you more flexibility going forward. Okay, now let's look at text. And much like the image example we just looked at, the corner tool isn't natively supported with text. If I select it, nothing really happens. And there is a way we can get around that. And the way we can do that is that if you have your text selected, you can say layer, convert to curves. Now when you do convert to curves, this does have a downside of course, which is that now your text isn't really text anymore. It's just shapes that look like text, which means you can't really edit the letters anymore and you can't change the spelling without a lot of work. Now if this is like your name or logo or some text that isn't gonna be changing a lot, maybe it's safe to convert to curves, but if this is something that's still kind of dynamic and you're not really settled on a final draft yet, I would recommend backing up your text just so you have another copy of it. So for example, let me undo this. With my text selected, I could just click Alt and just drag off a copy somewhere. I'll just keep it down there. And this is just kind of a best practice. It's not really needed for this demo, but I'm just kind of showing it to you. So back to our example here, what you do is you would say layer convert to curves. And this is really basically now just like our original example where I drew an arbitrary path, because if you select the corner tool, I can go into some letter, let's say T here, and I can change the corner. Maybe I want this to be changed. I can change this part up here. You can kind of make these subtle changes that you want and perhaps tweak a font a bit. Let me undo this. Like I said, you can select across multiple shapes. So what I could do is I could select all of these letters. Then I could select the corner tool with all points selected. And then from there, you could actually start editing all the points. So you could do something like this. Looks kind of interesting, actually. Maybe I could make it look like digital or something with the straight line effect. So you could do something like that. But like I said, it's not natively supported, but if you convert to curves, if you're comfortable with that, you can actually use the corner tool to make those changes. So that's the corner tool. It's a nice way to add a little bit of flair to your shapes. I hope you found this useful and feel free to ask any questions down in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.